morning. It's good morning. Welcome. Welcome to the MPO meeting, Sarasota Manatee Metropolitan Planning Organization, uh, February the 26th, 2018. We'll go ahead and um, call the meeting to order, and we'll start off uh, with the invocation. If everyone would please stand, and then we'll go into the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we thank you for getting us all here this morning in such beautiful, beautiful weather, and we're so blessed to be living in the paradise that you built. Father, we have so much going on and, um, in the state of Florida today, and not to mention the entire country, but give everyone strength to move in the right direction and do the necessary things that need to be done um, to help make sure that our schools are safe. We ask that you also guide this board in making its decisions today to be in the best interest of this particular area, Sarasota Manatee. And we just ask you, Father, to give us all strength to carry through and do the, the necessary things we need to do to make our area better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me get my stuff together here. Oh, I didn't see that. That wasn't on the other one. Oops. Okay. Do we have any alternates here this morning that I'm not aware of? I don't think so. Looks like. Madam, do we have a quorum? Yes, ma'am, we do. All right. Then we'll go ahead. Um, Vice Mayor Brown, I see that you're down on the new slip that I have for the invocation this morning. I'm sorry I didn't see it. That's all right. Maybe next time. Next month. <laughs> That's right. Next time. Okay, um, we'll go ahead at this time. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak on any item that is not on today's agenda? Uh, if so, please come up to the podium. You'll have three minutes. And be sure and give us your name, sir. For the record, my name is Lou Coster. I am the vice chair of CCNA in Sarasota. It has been, a member has brought it to my attention that there's several safety hazards on the section of Middle Street that is scheduled for uh, sidewalks and lights in 2019. One of them is overgrowth of vegetation at the corner of Osprey and Myrtle, which is a blind corner for cars coming out. They cannot see, it's accident prone. The other one is there are several large potholes in the area that really need to be patched and can't wait until 2019. There are no street lights, there are no sidewalks. Somebody just swerves at night to miss this, somebody could get killed. So all I'm here to ask is uh, who is the best commissioner in Sarasota County that I can go to to discuss this with? Well, I'm not going to touch that one, personally. <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> However, <laughs> we do have some Sarasota commissioners here. Would anyone like to take that one? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I love Commissioner questions. Caragiulo. Can you, can you tell me what the location was again, sir? Myrtle Street in Newtown. Middle Street? Myrtle. Myrtle. Oh, Myrtle. I'm sorry. Are you from yes. Boston? <laughs> <laughs> I am from Boston. Okay. Myrtle Sorry Street. Okay. Myrtle <laughs> Street. <laughs> All right. So that's city, right? It depends. It is. Where. It depends where. Yeah. It, it's a county road, and it, it's something that'll only take a couple of hours to fix. Would appreciate it. So, can I talk to you then, Mr. Carajudo? You. I, I will. By the by the time we speak, I would have already probably get some information for you. So. You can okay, uh, I have another up. meeting, so I can't stay till after the meeting, but I will reach out to you by email. Is that okay? Sure, certainly. Thank yeah. you very, very sure. much, everyone. Thank you, sir. 
Anyone else from the public like to come forward? All right, we will close public comment and move on. Let's go to the advisory committee reports. Um, Kathleen Whedon, the TAC. Good morning, Kathleen Whedon, uh, chair of the TAC. The technical advisory committee met on Monday, February 12th, and there was a quorum present. Um, Ms. Lee Holt went over the crash, draft crash reports and um, would like to receive the top locations that are important to each jurisdiction. These top locations will be used to identify 20 locations for preliminary safety assessments. Following a presentation by Lee Holt regarding the top 10 accomplishments of the MPO, the committee unanimously affirmed the 2018 strategic priorities. This will be presented to you today. Members also heard a presentation from Lee Holt regarding the tentative project priorities. The committee unanimously accepted the tentative project priorities list and it will be sent to FDOT to start the 4P process. Mr. Frank Domingo from Stantex gave a presentation on the Barrier Island Transportation Study and the pre this presentation is also on your agenda for today. Uh, meeting adjourned at 11.45. Were there any questions? I don't think so, thank you. Thank you. The CAC. Good morning, my name is Kathy Benz, and I'm the vice chair of the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, I'm standing in for Sarah, who wasn't able to be here today. The Citizens Advisory Committee met on Monday, uh, February 12, at 5 p.m., and a quorum was present. Following a presentation from Lee Holt regarding the top 10 accomplishments of the MPO, the committee unanimously affirmed the 2018 statistic priorities, and this will be presented to you today. Members also heard a presentation from Lee Holt regarding the tentative project priorities. And the committee unanimously affirmed the tentative project priorities. Mr. Frank uh, Domingo from Santec gave a presentation on the Barrier Island Transportation Study. This, trans this presentation is on your agenda today. Um, and Sarah Blanchard um, reviewed some aspects of uh, uh, county planning. And the meeting adjourned at 645. Do you have any questions? Any questions, commissioners? I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the uh, PTTF, um, Commissioner Benack. Oh, well, because I had physical therapy this morning, <laughs> I was not able to attend. So I understand Commissioner Mayo graciously stepped in in my place. Uh, uh, th thank you. Uh, I, I, I believe that sling is just uh, uh, something she put on this morning to get out of chair in the meeting. I'd like her to lift her arm and prove that she was she, she had a problem. As right, I I'll, said, I'd gladly trade with you. Yes, you did uh, say that. Commissioner Mayo, is that a motion? I'll second it. Yes, yes. I'd okay. love to make right. that. Uh, well, we had our we had our meeting. Uh, a couple of things. Most of the meeting was taken up with bus new things involving our bus systems in Manatee and Sarasota County. And I, I said at the meeting, and I'll say here, uh, things like on-demand bus service, uh, things like uh, partial trips being covered with Uber. I'm an old dog, and when I first heard these things, I will admit, fortunately, I said it to myself, that that's the craziest darn thing I've ever heard. <laughs> However, that's how we solve some of our financial problems and route problems with this new imaginative stuff. And we got a long explanation of that, and, and it was uh, one that I wish we could uh, have everyone sit and listen through, too. Uh, also, uh, we put a trolley in uh, March 20th, 2017, on Siesta Key, and uh, we all, the, a citizens group wanted it. I supported it. I exaggerated in my own comments about it what I thought the ridership would be. I said, we'll get up to 1,000 people a month. As it turns out, they'll finish the year on March 20th, 
with about 230,000 riders. And these are the imaginative things that I, I think that we all agree uh, at the PTTF are needed because with two people per car, that 230,000 riders on that one trolley represented about 115,000 car less car movements on fairly constrained Siesta Key. So that was a big deal. And that, Madam Chair, is my report. If there's any questions. All right. Well, I don't see any questions. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Mayo. The FDOT report. Um, LK, is it going to be you or is it going to be uh, Justin? I think we see the answer. It's actually going to be both of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Double I'll team. I'll start off, though. Good morning. Um, for the record, my name is Justin Abraham with FDOT. I just wanted to share a few public meetings that are scheduled for the month of March. <coughs> Excuse me. The first one uh, that I want to mention was US 41 at Gulfstream Avenue, intersection improvement. There is a public meeting scheduled for Tuesday, March 27th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The project manager is Joshua Jester. The location for that um, public meeting will be at the Sarasota Municipal Auditorium, which the address is 801 North Tamiami Trail, Sarasota, Florida. And the public information meeting to discuss uh, will be to discuss improvements to the intersection. And it will be more of an open house format where um, people can ask questions and provide comments to DOT representatives on, on more of a one-to-one -one setting. Um, the second one I wanted to mention was a public hearing for US 41 from Blackburn Point Road to McIntosh Road, which is scheduled for Thursday, March 15th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that location will be Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, Parish uh, 241 Bernie Road in Osprey, Florida. And they will be going over the proposed designs, uh, which includes reconstruction of paved shoulders and um, buffered bike lanes and uh, widening of a right turn lane and bike lanes and uh, sidewalks. Um, and then the third one that I wanted to mention was uh, a public meeting for US 41 roundabouts at 10th Street and 14th Street, um, which is scheduled for March 1st from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And uh, that will be located at the Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall, 777 North Tamiami Trail, Sarasota, Florida. And again, that one will be discussing the reconstruction, um, the signalized intersections, and replacing them with roundabouts. And um, so there will be an opportunity for anybody to, to discuss those things. There's one project update that I want to bring to your attention for US 301 at State Road 70 construction project. Uh, crews are resurfacing the roadway and widening turn lanes and improving drainage, installing new signage, and pavement markings. So, um, there will be some nighttime and overnight lane closures from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. while crews are still working. Um, so the ex expected completion date for, for that project is summer of this year, 2018. Um, I'm going to pass the mic to Secretary Nandam at this time. <laughs> okay. Madam Chair, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, I have a couple of uh, um, good news items. Uh, the University Parkway interchange project, the Diverging Diamond Interchange project. Um, we came to know that uh, last month that that project was selected as for engineering excellence uh, to receive an award for engineering excellence at the American Council of Consultant Engineers um, State Award. Awesome. We're going to receive that award in May, end of May in Orlando. But then last week we got uh, news that the same project was selected for the national award and uh, we'll be receiving that award in <laughs> April, <laughs> middle of April. So it's been a tremendous success with that project, and uh, you know we're so happy to receive those awards for the community. Wow. Yay, that's wonderful news, okay. And you know, I, I've said all along, and, and I hear it from my constituents <coughs> all the time, and, I mean, even yesterday, everyone just is thrilled with it. They feel like it's been a great success. It truly, has taken care of the problem. In fact, everyone wants to know when we'll get more of them. So, <laughs> you know, congratulations. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Wow. Yes, ma'am. That, that is really, really good yeah. news, and I drive it quite frequently, too, so I do appreciate the additional capacity. <coughs> I did have a question for DOT, if, that, if now's the appropriate time, Madam Chair. Yes, absolutely. Um, if you could give us just briefly what the status is on the uh, bridges, Cortez Bridge study as well as the Anna Maria mm -hmm. Island Bridge um, 
where, where we stand with those? Because I wasn't exactly sure. We are, um, you know, as you are aware, a few months back, we <laughs> um, did a public workshop, actually a public hearing for Cortez Bridge study. Mm -hmm. um, we are finalizing our recommendations and we anticipate to come before the MPO board to give an update next month, hopefully. Okay. Um, and then, uh, um, you know, we'll do a press release on what the decision for that bridge is okay. going to be. If you remember, we had three options. One of the options was the fixed span, um, and then the second option was mid-level, and then the third option was repair um, the existing bridge. Um, we are looking at the two options, which is the mid-level and the fixed span, and uh, we will be making a decision in the next month. Next okay. month, okay, yeah. great. And uh, um, as far as Anna Maria Bridge goes, um, the design is underway. We're actively looking for construction funding. Uh, whenever we see an opportunity, we put that project on the list. Um, so we're hopeful that you know sometime in the future we'll find funding. But at this time, there's no construction funding for the project bridge. Okay, thank you. And I and I asked that because I, I thought that was kind of where we were, and people need to be aware as we, you know, talk with the legislature and start looking at other opportunities for funding that we, you know, keep those at the top of our list. So, uh, as far as the Cortez Bridge go, we do have a design consultant on board, and we have. <laughs> There's some potential right of way needs depending on the option that we go with. Um, we do have a right of way phase program in the current five year program. So, depend, you know, whichever option we go, those phases will come into play. All right, Commissioner Johnson and then uh, the mayor. Um, yeah, uh, okay, just quickly, um, this is probably a stupid question, but, you know, when you make the decision, there's going to be public outcry regardless of which way you go. Uh, is there going to be any type of an appeal or any type of further public <coughs> hearings to discuss what that decision is, or is it going to be set in concrete, no pun intended, um, you know, a as, you know, a as we get down to finally making that decision that needs to be made, and so we can all move on from that discussion that I get, it's my district, so, you know, I get an earful every time in I'm out in Cortez or out on the island. Well, you know, th th that's the process of the pd &E study is we actually go through extensive public involvement process, which we have done. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> even after the public hearing, we've met with community leaders and um, both on the city of Bradenton Beach side and <coughs> on the Cortez Village side, uh, trying to get, garner some uh, information. And we're taking that into account, including the um, input that we received through the public um, hearing process. And uh, once we make the decision from the department's perspective, that's the direction we're going to go. Obviously, just because we finished the PD&E doesn't mean, when I say PD&E, the Project Development Environmental Study, doesn't mean that we stop our public engagement process. We do that throughout our design process, right of a phase, and during construction. So whatever concerns that we hear throughout the process, we take that into account and incorporate public input through, throughout our process. Okay, so the, so the final design <coughs> might be subject to some change based on some input. I'm thinking of the offloading and unloading ramps as to how far they're going to come down Cortez, you know, and obviously we know on the Braden Beach side there's not much room to work with there. Um, but there is some work or some uh, length of uh, Cortez that maybe it can be expanded or contracted depending on what your final design is. Uh, um, you know, I think uh, we've done extensive engineering through the PD&E side, so we are very comfortable on the, um, on, I think what you're talking about, Commissioner, is where it touched down, the bridge, right. whichever option. We are very comfortable with the points of where it touched down, but the design details, as an example, with the Anna Maria Bridge, we've created an aesthetics committee, right? So we want to do the same thing with the Cortez Bridge take community input into how the bridge is going to look at, look like, whichever option we go with. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of it, what we do under the bridge, how we connect both sides, all that stuff come into the picture through community input. That's what I was talking about. Okay, thank you. I, you know, like I say, I, I can't wait for the, uh, get my uh, flak jacket out <laughs> in anticipation of that final <coughs> result one way or the other. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, that comes with the job. <laughs> I can tell you, I got a lot of scars. <laughs> um, Vice Mayor Alpert, yes. Um, what's the update on the third lane on US 41 coming off the Ringling Bridge and the pedestrian stoplight? When can we expect that? Our current schedule states that by end of April, we'll have a third lane uh, open with the crossing 
um, that is right across First Street along mm -hmm. 41. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But we did learn last week from the contractor there's there's some delays in ordering of the the master arm pole that uh, supports the signal heads at the mm -hmm. crossing. So we're trying to work those details out. Um, but current schedule is end of April. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I just have one question for you in regards to US 41 and the West Villages area where uh, Island Walk and Grand Paradiso, this has been an ongoing issue. Many residents there concerned with the accidents. Do you have any update as far as the timing of, uh, of the light going in there? And I know the, develop, the developer is a big part of that, but is there any update? That I, I do not have an update on that. As I as I remember, they were going through the permitting process to get the signal constructed, but I may have an update towards the end of the meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Probably, yes, ma'am. Um, um, on 8th Avenue and Palmetto and 23rd Street, where the road that comes up to it is uh, in Hesperus, uh, there's a lot of curvature to it, and it comes up on a, on a mound. We uh, recently had yet another death at that intersection. And I uh, wonder if we might um, yet again take a, take a look at that. Um, hopefully it'll rise to the level of something, some signalization of some sort, maybe not the traffic light itself, but if there might be some way to, uh, to help do something in that, at that intersection. We've had several accidents and um, recent death again, so, and we've had, had them in the past. We'll, we'll take a look at that, Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, LK, I'll just finish up by saying that um, we really appreciate um, what FDOT is doing there at Greyhawks Landing on 64 uh, and, and Rye Road and that whole general area. I just want to say thank you. I know it's been, um, it's been a tough time and, and you guys have really done a great job so far. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Moving right along, the MPO Executive Director's Report. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair Baugh. Chair Baugh. The, uh, <laughs> first, I would call your attention to some of the extra material at your places. Um, most importantly, um, two addendums to the consent agenda. One, a Citizens Advisory Committee appointment, and the second, a resolution regarding the Transportation Disadvantage Program community and transportation coordinator uh, for Sarasota County and then in the minutes from the joint meeting there's an incorrect uh, reference to um, Mayor Carasone being an alternate from Northport and she's not an alternate from Northport right. so the word alternate will be scratched got it and let's see I also distributed um, in person versus email this time the legislative report from the Florida Metropolitan Planning Association Advisory Council of Carl McKiska and um, if you you may if you want to discuss any of those legislative items um, it's you certainly may um, I also distributed <coughs> a, the flyer once again for the MPOAC Institute which is a two-day training opportunity for elected officials or members of the MPO board only. There are two sessions this year. Um, if you have not attended, I strongly encourage your attendance. The MPO reimburses either you or your agency for um, attending. And it, I think those who have attended I, I have, have been very glad they went. Yeah, I, I'd just like to say one thing about this uh, course. Uh, I know Willie and I spoke very highly of attended it, but uh, we did pass a resolution in City Council um, the last meeting that any future MPO representatives board will be required to take that course. Smart move. Thank you. Smart move. You know, commissioners from Manatee, perhaps we should consider that. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. No, I've done it. I'm sorry, Commissioner Roth. Uh, thank you. Um, David, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, as I've been going through the, uh, uh, the material here that was presented, the uh, legislative updates, uh, you know, as I attended this course, and I highly recommend everyone to do so. Uh, 
highly recommend everyone to do so. It, it, it really, it's, it's a very intense weekend and, um, you know, covers a lot of material. So it, it's, not, it's not a weekend off by any means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot. The, uh, what I was curious is the, uh, <coughs> one of the legislations, two of the legislations in here about <laughs> municipal travel um, and uh, they're capping at 120 a night, which is pretty unrealistic uh, in this day and age to find any place at that rate from, from the state legislature. <coughs> Do you have, will, will you be able to, if this, this won't go into effect right now, but when it does, and it says state and municipal fund, or you know, um, cities, low, county and municipal funds, will you, people still be able to attend this event through the MPO? I would assume so for this, um, because this is specifically talking about um, elected officials and county and city funds, and it, it actually exempts certain other constitutional officers. The this is um, the one of the bills that at its last meeting the MPO board voted to send a letter, and you should have received um, what what was sent, um, as seen as something that would interfere with the ability of local government to conduct its business. And, and that, that's kind of my point is that I, I think that I'm not sure what, what the intent is of this legislation, um, but um, certainly uh, that figure should probably be adjusted. Uh, you know, last time I stayed at a place for under $100 a night, it was pretty scary. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if in Tallahassee you can. <laughs> Maybe that. Try was. West Palm Beach. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Thank so. you. And on that note, I'll just add that um, that's going to come up here shortly at the uh, MPOAC meeting that we had. It was discussed, and uh, I will be in Tallahassee next Wednesday and Thursday, and I do plan on discussing those items. Thank you. So, I just anyway. have a couple of more quick items. First, happy birthday, Commissioner Johnson. Last week. Happy birthday. That's, that's <laughs> 55. 55. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we have um, um, the MPO. I, I guess we have a loss to report. And if I could ask Colleen McGue. Uh oh. Uh -huh. Stand up <coughs> and be recognized. No, Colleen, tell us Co it's not true. <laughs> Colleen mm. has been stolen <laughs> by the city of Sarasota where she will be there or is now their chief transportation planner a new position. <laughs> get you. We are very very proud of, <laughs> of that for her. Um, it's a, it'll create some you know temporary challenges for us and opportunities as well but she has been a, a tremendous asset to the MPO staff and we will miss her and uh, we really do our, uh, recognize her, and, and we're proud. Does I think the wiener dog go with thing. her? Yes. The little dog goes <laughs> with her, yes. Yeah. Stella, we will miss Stella too. Yeah. Colleen? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yay and for the city of Sarasota, bummer yeah. for the MPO. Right. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, and last but certainly not least, I, um, tomorrow is the Gulf Coast Safe Street Summit. And um, I wanted to thank and recognize Mayor Shirley Gruber Bryant, who is serving on a mayor's panel um, and will be representing um, the city of Palmetto and our MPO and some of the efforts that we're making within our region to address uh, safe streets and make, make streets more complete and more safe. Thank you. That's all I Anything have. Anything you want to say, Mayor? Um, not on that. I want to circle back. Okay. When, when, he, when everybody's done with Dave, I want to circle back to something. Um, Dave, are you done? I'm, that's all I have. Okay. Mayor, I think it's in your lap. Go well, ahead. Um, I was, it was mentioned to me that my last comment didn't make the tape because I didn't pull the mic over. And so I just want to make sure I got it on the record uh, requesting uh, the FDOT to look at the intersection of 8th Avenue, um, 8th Avenue and 23rd Street in Palmetto because we've had several deaths there in, in uh, just one very recent but uh, several in the past so anyway um, I do appreciate uh, the comments that uh, the FDOT will be looking at that so looking into it and coming back to us I just want to make sure I got that on the record thank you for letting me know I wasn't being uh, using my due diligence and <laughs> speaking into the mic 
Any other comments or questions for Dave? Paul? No? Okay. Then we'll go ahead and move on. Um, chair's report. Well, um, February 1, <coughs> I did go to the MPOAC meeting in West Palm Beach, and no, you cannot get a hotel room there for $120 a night. Uh, needless to say, uh, that bill was thoroughly discussed in the meeting. Um, and I know this board had a major discussion on it as well. So, um, you know, everyone is, is working on that to try and, and um, change the bill somewhat. Um, other things that were interesting, and, and I can tell you, uh, Manatee County Commissioners, y'all might want to take heed. Um, it seems the MPOAC meeting is always the first Thursday of every month. That's also in Manatee County has their land use meetings. So um, I tried uh, with Dave's help to suggest changing the date so that it wouldn't be a problem for this, uh, this group moving forward. Um, it was met with some resistance because evidently in the past they've tried to do that and tried to come up with the best date to have it. So um, they are going to be discussing it again. I'm hoping perhaps for a Wednesday but at this point, I can't guarantee what might happen with that. So, um, you know, if you know anybody on the MPOAC board, you might want to send them an email or make a phone call, uh, lobby them a little bit because it is going to be in Sarasota. I don't know when all the municipalities and everyone has their meetings, but, um, you know, for me as chairman this year to always have to miss a land use meeting, it's a very important meeting in our county. So um, it's going to be quite a battle for me. Um, it was a good group, I, I've got to tell you, it was, a, um, it was a really good group of people. We had uh, a lot of good networking that was done and um, we talked about, like I said, a lot of laws and regulations that affect the MPOs in the state. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good board to be on to see really and get a better idea of, of what is happening throughout the different counties and municipalities. So. Um, we just got to get that date changed. But anyway, the next meeting is in June, June 1 through 3, I believe. Has it changed, Dave? Um, the National Association of Regional Councils meeting is June 1 through 3, I believe. And then the MPOAC date that they talked about at the meeting was on that Thursday. Right. And yet this, um, the report that was sent out had it, I believe, incorrect on the Wednesday. Um, they used to hold all their meetings on Friday. I believe they're, they have to send out a clarification okay. as to the next meeting. Yeah. And the next uh, MPOAC meeting I will be attending, so commissioners uh, be aware I will not be at that land use meeting. So it is what it is. Um, that is, is really about it, but I do want at this time, um, Mayor Shaw, would you stand up with me? <coughs> I had a pretty big chair to fill uh, when I took over this year. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to present to you the certificate of appreciation uh, for you being chairman last year. And uh, I learned a lot from you, and I look forward to serving with you for a while. So congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Here, here. Um, and that's really about all the chair has to report. So is there, are there any questions for anything? Okay, we'll move forward. We'll go ahead to the consent agenda. We do have the two new items that was added. Uh, so what is the will of the board? Chair, I yes, move to approve the consent agenda with the addition noted. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve by Mayor Bryant, a second by Councilman Roth. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is approved unanimously. Thank you. Um, appointments uh, slash reappointments of committee representatives. Um, Dave, do you want to? Um, actually, those were part of the consent agenda. You're right. I see that. <coughs> Apologize. I'm apologizing. Um, all right, we'll go down to board action. The first one, MPO strategic priorities. Dave, uh, do you want to move sure, us into I, that, Sure, I'll sir? just say a, a, a couple of words as Lee um, will make this presentation. And 
it's a good time with federal certification report and um, you know the board members to sort of look back and see what you all have accomplished in the last couple of years yes. and also look forward as we work on the next unified planning work program which is our two-year budget document that will be coming before you in April to and you know deciding and and putting in writing some of the priorities and initiatives that will help us accomplish the mandated responsibilities of the MPO, the core functions, how are we going to do those over the next two years. So um, this is uh, related to our Unified Planning Work Program, but it's also a recap of what you all have done in the last couple of years, and I thought you'd be, if you have other items that um, you know might not be on here we will probably repurpose this content into some of our um, educational and informational material All right. good, good morning. morning good morning um, as you'll hear shortly we just completed our quadrennial um, certification by federal highway and in that work in preparation for that certification uh, we revisited the things that we have done over the last few years uh, we also um, even before we knew that colleen was leaving you know we've had four retirements in the last five years we have a, a new young staff and we um, you know the world is changing so it was a good time for us to look at what we've done what we've accomplished and to look forward at how we should reorganize ourselves um, to address the needs that we have today. Um, but I know many of you around the table are old enough to remember David Letterman. So I'm going to do this starting with number 10. <laughs> what we did was we had a staff retreat and we, just, we chose, we, we did quite a bit of work deciding what we thought were the things that were important that we had done. Then we took this list to our committees, to our technical advisory committee and our citizens advisory committee, and those folks helped us to rank these things, um, and, and this is the order that they came out in. Number 10, we hosted a regional training for our MPO partner agencies. Um, this is not new. We've been doing this for a long time, but we were the first group to host the um, Title VI for our partners and we're very proud of the uh, quality training that we've been able to bring. Um, as more and more budgets are cut for travel, uh, we're excited that we can bring training locally, good quality training for our partners. Number nine, you'll hear about this in a minute, we were recognized for noteworthy practices by Federal Highway and Federal Transit Administration. Number eight, this year we created a new public outreach program. We have our new logo that you see on a lot of our materials. We have shirts with our logos so that we're recognized um, in the community and we're trying to um, have a public face that people know where to go for information about transportation. Number seven, we've had community partnerships for a long time, but we've really strengthened <coughs> those partnerships as we've moved into um, performance-based planning. Um, we've done some really interesting things with the Manatee Millennials and with the um, Sarasota Manatee Bicycle Club, uh, age-friendly Sarasota. We've targeted some particular populations to work with, um, and we're very proud of those new partnerships, um, new additional partnerships. Um, we've done a lot with bike, ped, and trail activities. We've received funding for the Willow Ellington Trail and for the Legacy Trail Extension because of our work on the Gulf Coast Regional Trail. And we hosted our first event with the Manatee Millennials, the Ciclovia in Bradenton. We've really worked hard, you all have worked hard. Um, I've said before, you probably think performance measures is my middle name because you've had a performance measures presentation at every meeting for about the last 18 months. But I will tell you that that has paid off um, we have been recognized nationally for our work in performance measures by two organizations. Um, so we're really proud of that work and you all have, have really contributed to that. We've initiated some important regional mobility studies, both the Barrier Island Traffic Study and the Central Manatee Network Alternatives Analysis. They're still going on, 
but a lot of important recommendations are coming out of those studies and um, will make different uh, make a difference in the future um, we've continued to work on us 41 and we um, have a lot going on in that corridor as we redevelop it from uh, what it was originally built out as in the 1950s and 60s we just heard about this one we've supported innovative design the diverging diamond um, first in florida uh, now first in the nation we're really proud of that that could not have happened without support from the mpo okay. and number one we've advanced our regional road projects the venice bypass is fully funded 15th Street East is funded through right-of-way River Road and DeSoto Bridge have funding in the work program um, and so we've worked really hard at listening to what you um, want to do what your priorities are and have worked hard to advance those things so those are our top 10 accomplishments and with those things in mind uh, we are moving forward with our 2018 proposed strategic priorities. These are the things that we are proposing that we do. Some of them are things that we always do, um, but some of them are new. Um, our goal is to create an organizational structure to deliver all of those things that need to be done. Um, to develop our unified planning work program, which is our two-year um, budget slash um, way of work and we will be using this to also measure and evaluate our staff performance as you know we're um, implementing safety assessments we're going to be doing an all hazards recovery plan we have a training march first and second with our um, emergency management partners transit and others you know if uh, irma was a five and we lost transportation assets what order would we rebuild in? I mean, those are big questions, and we'll be working on a plan to answer some of those big questions. Um, we want to do an, a gap analysis on US 41. We've been working on US 41 for over 10 years now. Um, we've done a lot, but there are still things to do. Uh, there are, are significant safety concerns on US 41, and we want to do a gap analysis to see what still needs to be done so that as we move into our next long-range transportation plan we may or may not be able to consider additional priorities in the uh, over and above us 41. we're going to do an active transportation plan this is a transit plan with walking and biking it was discussed at length at the um, pttf meeting this morning um, 83 percent of walkers uh, and bikers get on a bus or vice versa 83 percent of bus riders walk or bike to get on the bus um, so making those connections is very very important we're updating our congestion management plan to incorporate performance measures uh, obviously congestion and addressing congestion is very important to this board um, we'll be doing our project prioritization um, we'll be setting our targets for mobility we've already set our safety targets and we'll be actually kicking off our 2045 long-range transportation plan at the end of this year we'll be implementing the uh, study recommendations where we're hoping to implement recommendations as quickly as possible we've asked you at your local jurisdictions to incorporate the central manatee network alternatives analysis and barrier island traffic study recommendations into your project priorities so that we don't have to wait a year to implement the low-hanging fruit um, and we will be working um, to implement our ATMS master plan to um, move traffic better on the roads that we've got we've we'll be hearing the report from our federal certification review today uh, we've also completed our FDOT state certification already this year uh, we've been able to take care of our interlocal agreement which was a recommendation uh, from the audit we will be bringing you our unified planning work program uh, for review in April it must be adopted by July 1st that is our that is a two-year plan uh, we will also be updating our MPO uh, personnel policies 
which was another recommendation from our certification. Big job. Um, believe it or not, our executive director contract is up. David's been with us for uh, all the way through a full contract, and it'll be time to uh, review that this year. We'll be doing our new consultant scopes and budget. And we have 31 committee meetings and six board meetings on the calendar in 2018. And putting together um, meaningful agendas is important to us, and we, wanna, we want to uh, uh, do that well. <coughs> Finally, uh, we have a, we've got a new focus on public involvement. Public involvement is mandated in, in state and federal law. Um, Corinne, who is one of our new staff folks, is, has public involvement in her <coughs> title. She's also working with transit, um, transportation disadvantaged, um, but we have a, a new sort of focus on public involvement and bringing new people into the transportation conversation. Um, we have several workshops and events throughout the year. Um, our next one coming up we have the Sarasota Roll and Stroll. We're expecting about 300 people. That's part of the Legacy Trail Extension Weekend uh, events. And then we'll be doing a similar, uh, what's called Manatee Open Streets in the fall. So we'll be doing two of those events this year. Last year we just did one. So those are the things that we'll be doing. We also want to do a new orientation program for board members and committee members uh, following the election this year when we have a lot of new members. Uh, we'd like to do an orientation program for our new folks. Um, this is very complicated stuff and we think we can help people get oriented um, better than we have in the past. So we're asking for you to affirm the 2018 strategic priorities. Um, Sometimes we say we have a full plate. Sometimes I say, let's just get out the turkey platter and keep going. Um, but this, if, if uh, unless you have other things you would like to see us do or comments on any of these things, we will be using this to build our unified planning work program over the next two months and bring that back to you at the April meeting. All right, thank you, Lee. Any questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. I would make a motion to approve, and I do have a question. All right. Get a second. Second. Uh, my question is, um, as you know, we're very cons very excited about the multimodal um, emphasis corridor. Uh, on the gap analysis, would there be an anticipated date that that would start and when we could expect a report? Do you have anything kind of tentatively um, in place for that? Um, we would be working to start that um, after the July 1 in the new fiscal year. And I would expect that it would only take a few months to do that. Okay. I would hope that we could bring it back by the end of the year. Our goal would be to have that information available when we begin the long range transportation plan in January. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Bennett. Yeah, I, I think this is a good list um, um, of what we have going on. I, I think it's a good thing to put it all together, but my favorite part of this is always implementation. You know, plans are necessary, but we got to get to implementation. So I, I do have a question about the Central Manatee Network alternative analysis. I know we have some short-term recommendations. I also see that the city of Bradenton has been asked to actually vote and has it on their agenda on Wednesday on some of these short-term. And I'm just kind of curious, what, what happens after that? What, what if the city says no to all of them? What happens? I, I, I know this is probably a politically loaded question, but I just am kind of curious to know the process again um, because we you know, need to move some of these forward. So I'm just kind of curious to know what might happen. M Madam Chair. Yes, sir. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I was drinking coffee. <coughs> so um, not because of the question, Commissioner. <laughs> 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 so, um, we're, we're hoping that uh, we would get support from the city commission. But in case, because, because of the process that we went through, we've had multiple meetings with the technical staff and where are those options? So we're hoping that <coughs> we would get support for the short-term <coughs> recommendations. But at the same time, if we get uh, feedback from the council or commission that 
their concern about certain options, you know, I think it's time for us to sit down with them and their staff on what those concerns are, maybe adjust, you know, see if there is a need for adjustment of those particular short-term improvements. Um, but uh, let's wait and see what happens with the um, commission meeting. And I, if I can, Madam Chair, <coughs> I, I understand there are some alternates that have been proposed. Um, the folly plan, I guess, is what it's called. And I just wondered if you've um, had consideration of those, some of those alternates, and have had time to look at some of those. Um, we, um, I actually attended the first street, um, uh, the meeting with the first street group, um, and. Um, that particular community because we made a commitment to them that we are going to engage them and through the process, even though this is a planning study and all, you know, other than the short-term recommendations, all the long-term recommendations are not final yet because those will be vetted through the PD&E process that's programmed five years down the road. So um, what we did was uh, we met with them and the um, Rick Foley, the, the Foley plan was uh, presented to us. So we made a commitment to them that we're going to go back and incorporate that particular plan into the simulation model that we have done with the, um, with the traffic numbers and see how that particular plan is going to change the um, network operations and if there is any improvement that we could generate from that particular plan. So we made a commitment to them to come back um, after we finish that particular analysis and present, you know, focus the presentation on three aspects. One, to show, to, to, to show the group what the results of that particular analysis is because there's, um, there's um, obviously change in traffic patterns that are going to occur with that particular plan. Um, and then talk about, based on the results of that particular plan, talk about feasibility of some of those options because not everything is using existing network. We got, you're looking at new alignments. And then the second thing that we told them is because we did not have an opportunity to go over the short-term recommendations with them because the focus completely drove into this particular plan in that particular meeting. So we're going to present the short-term recommendations also and try to drive the point that, you know, we need to go forward with these short-term recommendations. And then the third thing we want to focus on is our uh, public involvement plan going forward and how we're going to keep the communication and discussions open with the community as we go forward with uh, towards the PD&E study that's um, programmed for the disorder bridge. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, and, and I bring this up because this is the regional group that is affected. It's probably the Central Manatee Network analysis, I would say, to the Sarasota County and the municipalities <coughs> of the City of Palmetto and City of Brayton is probably our most important transportation um, project ongoing and, right now. And, and, and to close, you know, if there is any merit um, that we find from the plan as we evaluate that particular plan. We will definitely come back to the technical group and then um, come back to the policy um, makers, you know, basically come to the MPO and make a presentation on that. But we need to figure out, you know, the, what kind of impact that particular plan is going to have on the network and is, are there any benefits and the feasibility of the plan before we come in front of you. Thank you. Um, Vice Mayor Daniels. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I support these priorities. I think they're well thought out, and obviously, as we get into them, some things may happen. But I, I would like to comment on two things since uh, I've been in, uh, living in the area now 13 years, and the Venice Bypass has been, I think, a very good example of how we've made improvement on our coordination with the local business people and so forth. If you remember, uh, the northern section of the bypass, Nokomis, I can remember every day I would drive and turn at the intersection of the lower road and somebody would be core drilling <laughs> to see how much asphalt was there. And uh, I think, okay, you can remember that project. And, but I've not heard one complaint from any local businesses that you cost <laughs> me money, you haven't helped me, my customers get in, and so forth. And so I, I, my hat's off to you. The other thing is, uh, and I don't want to change the uh, other document, but uh, I think there was great coordination between uh, Department of Transportation and County on our, uh, our, our little roundabout down there in South County called Venice. <laughs> All the body shop people now are not going to move there, so, uh, but uh, very great job on coordinating a reconfiguration, and my God, you got more stripes, lights, signs bricks and so forth there that <laughs> uh, anyway 
I just want to say it's a great job coordination and and uh, F, uh, DOT led that with the county and uh, I think that's a great thing don't need to change anything in our documents but I just want to make that known thank you any other comments <coughs> yeah thank you um, just from the city of Braden standpoint I know we've talked about this a lot and it's been through and I've had some I don't want to say concerns about the short term but some um, possibility is of what ifs if they don't happen you know the way that it's designed obviously we hope it does and it would work if we did the short terms um, and I think we will uh, talk about it a lot Wednesday at our meeting um, and I you know I'm hoping that our board will go forward to you know give a, a thumbs up for the short term part of it as well as saying hey if it doesn't work exactly like we think because of you know we don't